Ladies and gentlemen, today is September 16th, 2017, and this is the Cancale So, but more importantly, Concept Art Bootcamp, Day 9, where we're learning to become amazing artists, strike out on our own, and become the next big thing. And today we're going to be learning about Character Design 3. I almost messed that up. And of course, we are going back to our Boxer Bunny Girl, which we started last week. We talked about building a character from the ground up with designing according to three different pillars. Well, we added a fourth but it's our types, tropes, and spins, and we landed ourselves at a couple different designs that we liked. Now today what we're gonna be doing is, we're gonna go and close that down, we're gonna go ahead and be building off of that, and I'm going to be taking you to a magical world of iteration. Now what could that possibly mean? Iteration. Iteration is a very important word in the land of concept art because it basically means that you are going to be creating hundreds of sketches that are basically never going to be used, but they all get you closer to a final set of characters or a final look for a character. And you're gonna be solving a lot of problems. And I'm gonna be walking you through this process because I'm sure that you might be a little daunted by looking at this, be like, oh no, oh, Keenan, I thought you said I only had to do like three drawings. What, this is like, this is like, I, I don't know how many there are on here, maybe like 20? No, no, there's maybe like 50, but anyway. This takes hours, people. This takes a long time. And this is the dark side of concept art, the stuff that we never show you, uh, because it's just, there's a lot of bad ideas. There's a lot of bad ideas in here, and there's a lot of okay ideas. And these things you have to filter constantly. You have to basically uh, bring these ideas out of your mind onto the canvas, and then recycle it over and over again, filtering it more and more each time till you get to the point where you've solved your problems and you've gotten one thing that might just work. Now, of course, let's just go ahead and jump into this. I made a bunch of notes and we'll come back to this in just a moment. But let's go ahead and jump into the time lapse because we have to talk about a bunch of really important things that are gonna be happening to your mind. Speaking of that, uh, a lot of things that are gonna be happening to your mind as you go through this and some really helpful tools that I've found to keep you sane basically through this entire journey of drawing hundreds of versions of this character, okay? So, because it's not easy. A lot of us know, like we've been there before, it's hard to draw the character more than even just a couple times. It's hard to admit that you might be wrong. It's hard to admit that, oh man, th this character is just looking bad. It feels bad to draw things that just look like crap. But you have to understand that each time you might just pull out one thing. You might pull out one thing that works, or worst case scenario, with every drawing you find one more thing that doesn't work. And that also, similar to Thomas Edison, gets you closer to finding your goal, gets you closer to finding that final solution. So let's talk about the first tool that I want to bring to your attention here that you can see that I'm doing. Now last week we talked about designing with values, which is what you can see over here with this character and this character, see how they are built with darks and lights? Versus over here, I'm drawing with lines, but then I'll also start going back to values in just a moment. Now this has to do with switching up your technique. It has to do with switching up the, think of it as switching up the way that you are trying to sculpt this character. Sometimes drawing with lines is a good way to start really defining shapes or designs. Whereas with values, it helps to create depth. You can simulate depth or materials. See how creating this little line right here? Let me go ahead and just zoom in on that, on the actual PSD. See how when you work with values, you can create things like this little line right here. I'll go ahead and draw that too, because that needs to come through. So things like in this boot, in this boot, you can see this little line that kind of goes down like that, and a little line right there. That will help to simulate that the character's uh, wearing metal boots or metallic type of things. And you can do that much more easily with values than if you're just drawing with lines. You can look at this character and you can say, oh, okay, I like this arrangement of shapes, but this doesn't tell us necessarily anything about the materials. You might look up here and see, oh, okay, well, there is a little bit of, uh, I can see this fur up here, right? this fur and this hood here, but other than that, I don't know what any of these materials are. Is this plastic? Is it, is it just a big shoe? You know, so that's a good way that values can come to the rescue. Also, you can see up here, I did a value study on the character doing a kick. And this actually comes in really handy because stuff like this 
where, again, I talk about changing up your plan of attack or your direction of attack. Here, I'm not even necessarily con concerned about the design of the character. I'm just drawing them in a cool pose. And I thought, hey, that would be cool if the leg, if the rocket-propelled leg can actually extend and do a long-range kick. And this character actually has fully cybernetic legs. And that will help to also continue getting those creative juices flowing. So let's go ahead and jump back to the time lapse, continue with this. You can see that's what I'm doing right here, drawing in that character kicking. Uh, but I'm not concerned about necessarily how the costume is. See, it's just the silhouette. See how I've just drawn the silhouette of the character? And I'm trying to come up with an action pose. Now with that, you can see now I said, oh, okay. Well, if the leg was to basically dislocate and launch the foot out like that, what would the design of the parts need to look like? There would need to be a clear form of separation, a clear uh, thing that we can see there that would look like it could launch the leg or it could basically dislocate itself. Is that the right word? Maybe not dislocate, but uh, extend itself. Yes, mechanically extend itself with some sort of piston or rocket powered, what whatchamacallit. Again, you don't have to worry about all that stuff. You just keep in mind that it needs to look like it could separate into two. And uh, so I took that, and now I'm moving into more of these sketches, more value sketches. Um, I really like to, I, I just jump back and forth between doing lines and values. I find that values works really well when I am shrinking down the character. And that's another thing that I want to tell you guys about, is that when you're concepting a character, you're solving what we like to call a big problem. Let's go ahead and jump over to the next part of the time lapse. There's three of these puppies. And, uh, oh, this one's really fast. But uh, yeah, when you're designing, you're solving big problems. And a great man once said that to solve big problems, you need to work small. And that's a fancy way of saying that basically the smaller that you work, you wanna shrink down those silhouettes as you're working with them. And I'll show you that in just a moment, we'll get to that. Um, but you can see a lot of the sketches here, I'm, I'm working small. I'm not concerned about what the character's face will look like yet, necessarily. I'm not drawing exactly how the stitching will look on the, the hood that she's wearing, or all the little cybernetic intricacies of her boots. I'm just playing around with general shapes and values and trying to get an overall look. Because then, what we're gonna do is we need to solve small problems. We need to small sm small problems in terms of detail. And in order to do that, we are then going to zoom in. So it's like this interesting dichotomy of solving big problems by working small and solving small problems by working big. Okay, see how that works? Ah, that's clever, you like that? <laughs> so anyway, we'll, we'll be getting to solving the small problems probably next week, probably next week, because we're still, for this episode, I just really wanted to explain this portion because it's so important that it gets across. It's so, so important that this gets across to you guys. And just knowing, I, I want you guys to see, look, I'm even changing up the pose. And this actually has to do with something, I should have said this earlier because this is the number one rule. In fact, I should just keep this going while, while this is going. Uh, <laughs> the number one rule that is going to help you keep yourself sane and to get, get your best work out you can see here, again, I, I was uh, working too large. See how I shrunk down that sketch? And now I'm working small again to just really figure out how I want these ears to look. How do I want the ears that come out the back of the, hook, uh, the hood to look? And how do I want those to balance out with the large feet? Those types of things really help when you're shrinking things down, thinking small, small, small. Uh, but the number one rule is, of course, rest. You want to be taking breaks and you want to be reassessing the situation all the time, at least on an hourly basis. Because if you don't do that, if you don't take breaks, your mind, and trust me, I'm talking from experience here, your mind is going to turn to mush. You are gonna spend hours trying to figure out something. You're, trying, you're gonna try to force a solution to work. And then at the end of it, you're gonna realize that you spent all those hours for nothing. It's gonna be, yeah, you'll maybe have found a solution, but then you'll realize that it's completely off your original vision, okay? So this is a good example of uh, taking a break and then coming back. And what I said when I came back from this break was, I feel like I'm just trying to slap on the fur here, right? This was about the time when I got to, let's go ahead and zoom back out here. 
So I was really trying to figure out how to make the fur work on here, and I started to run into a problem. Started to run into a very important problem, and that was that I felt like the fur was just ending up feeling very tacked on. It's starting to feel just very tacked on. Let me zoom out for this. Um, and this has to do with balance, not only in your shapes, right? Because we've talked about balance with, with our shapes and, and silhouettes, but now we need to think about balance with our materials and making sure that there's not too much going on. At most, I've heard a, a great rule of thumb is that you wanna have three materials happening. Three materials, ideally maybe just two um, on your character's costume, that is, okay? Now we have a few things that are working against us here. We have fur, we have tech, and this is kind of, a, I should darken this color down so that we can see this a little bit better. There we go. We have tech and then we have like silk, right? We have silk, which is basically kind of the, the part of the, the hood and uh, maybe these shorts down here. And that's, that's okay, but I just felt like there was something weird. And, and like, especially in here, in like the, the bodysuit and in, in her pants, I, I couldn't quite figure out how to, basically there were three things existing only in one area. The hood comprised of just fur, but as soon as you start tacking on fur to the boots, this is what I'm talking about, is like you want your materials to be represented in, represented in all of the character. <laughs> you can tell I'm just, I'm getting frustrated by talking about this because it's actually tough. This is actually the problems that you guys are going to deal with and it will make you, it will make you go crazy. It will actually make you go crazy. Um, but if you take breaks and you ask yourself questions like this, then it's going to keep you on track and you will not go as crazy, right? You're still going to go crazy, but not as crazy. So there was all fur up here, but I couldn't add any fur to the boots without it feeling strange or looking like fifth age Tarek, right? I wasn't about to go there. And then the silk, there was no silk. I couldn't add any silk to the boots either. It's like all the silk existed in the character's torso. The silky areas are all in the character's torso. And then the fur is all up here. Now the problem with this is that I just felt that it was dividing the character too much. There was too much division happening in this character. And I wanted to unify that. I wanted to unify that. I wanted some more techie elements to like exist in here, in these areas somehow. And then um, and then I couldn't think of anywhere else to add fur. Like, did I, like it definitely wasn't gonna go down here. So you know what I ended up deciding? I decided to completely can it. I decided to completely can the fur. But you can see I went through a bunch of other ideas of really trying to figure out, oh, maybe I just need to play up the fur more. Maybe I should make this more fur. And see, now we're going really crazy with the Cruella de Vil uh, sort of treatment on this where she has this huge fur coat. And then maybe just a tiny bit here, I'll use the same, I'll use the same colors. And then the silk is still there, but it's just kind of in these little areas. And then that allows maybe the fur to be the primary focus, right? The fur can be the primary focus and then everything else kind of takes a back seat. I felt like that helped it a little bit, but then I started thinking about how this character is gonna look when it's fighting, when it's making poses like this, and having that huge fur coat just like flailing around all over the place, not to mention how impractical, right? I know this is like, we're, we're talking about a futuristic bunny girl, but it is nice to think about practicality of your fighters, right? She would get so hot and sweaty in that thing, and it would be so clunky to like try to move around with that. It just didn't make sense. So eventually, I took a break, and I realized, you know what? It's time to can the fur. It's time to can it. We're going all, we're going green with this one. We're going green, or is that the right word? We're going hu human humanitarian, right? We're going humanitarian with this, we're canning the fur. And that ended up relieving a huge stress. But you can see me go through this thought process right here. This is right when I said, okay, let's see if we can play up the fur so that way it's a major part of the character. And it also just ended up making her look more like, it made her end up looking more like an Eskimo, right? <laughs> it looked like she was like from this wintry area, but then she has like this bodysuit on and you know, it just didn't make sense. There were so many things clashing, so many ideas clashing that I really needed to take a step back and I needed to ask myself some very important questions. Another thing that I will say is that it is imperative that as you draw this, 
always be comparing comparing your current sketch right over here to some of your older sketches things particularly that you might be fond of or even more so things that you might not have been fond of at the beginning when you first drew it but then comparing the two you can now begin to see oh hey I actually solved an interesting problem here and the problem that I saw that I fixed with this right here with uh, that old sketch let's go ahead and head up here let's go ahead and make some notes on this the problem that I had solved with this one specifically was I liked how I had created the fabric. I like how I had positioned the fabric on this. Because you, because you can see here, the hood goes up, it goes over, and it's very clear what's happening with this fabric. And then it goes up and around, and it basically wraps around the character. You can see that there. And I like the clarity of that. I like the clarity of that, and I liked that it looked like it was made out of a thin material, a thin, silky, breathable material. And I also like just the general shape of this. I, I loved the arrow shape and how it just brought, it brought itself down to the triangle and it created a nice triangle silhouette of our character. Sorry, that's like way crazy. Okay, there we go. So um, always be saving your old drawings. That's another major tool that I can tell you guys about because sometimes you might feel bad, you might feel embarrassed about a crappy drawing and you wanna get rid of it. Don't do that. It is good to kind of clean house, right? Sometimes you want to toss a few things away. But uh, always keep your iterations. Always keep all of your iterations. Because sure enough, as I found myself, like let's just do a quick little exercise here. We started with this top left one right up here with episode one. Or sorry, episode two was where we actually finally started that. And then we kind of got, uh, through all this iteration, we got down to our bottom left design. We got to our bottom left design, which is actually the one that I'm feeling pretty good about. I'm feeling pretty good about that, but I'll, I'll get into why I like this one most in a moment. Actually, after everything that I have described, all the things that I've been telling you that I'm thinking about, I bet you can look at this right now and you can tell why this is one of my favorites. But uh, regardless, uh, I've solved a lot of problems here and then I went back to my old sketches. I went back to my old, old sketches. And now I can see with all of the things, all the problems that I've figured out, I can then look at one of these old sketches and I can say, oh, well, I like this one too. I like, maybe we wanna try another character with big gauntlets. And in fact, maybe I'll do that. Maybe that'll be the live draw for you guys. Let's start it over again. Uh, but this one, I feel like it's more of a diamond shape. It's more of a diamond shape. But that might be another route to explore. And here's the important part. Now that we go to explore this, we've solved a lot of problems. For instance, okay, well, we've canned the fur. We're now going with thin materials, the thin silk. We are going with this tech vibe. We're going with this techy shape language. And I've also worked in the tech. You can see that there's tech being worked in to here, here, here on the punching gloves. And see how now, once you start moving those materials, to different parts of the character, it starts to feel whole. It starts to feel balanced. And that is what we like, okay? I, got, I spoiled a little bit of the ending, but let's go ahead and get back to our time lapse, finish this out. Um, but that is the, the main thing that I want to tell you guys about, guys, is, is that <laughs> main thing that I want to tell you guys about is that this stuff is very, very tough. And, and it's very important that you guys understand just how many different ideas that you'll have, uh, how many crappy ideas you're gonna have, how many things are just gonna be pushed to the side, and the importance of attacking a single character from so many different freaking angles. It's like unbelievable. It's unbelievable how many different ways you can approach a different subject. And how once you are taking breaks, I like to, okay, you're probably wondering how often I take breaks. Uh, ideally, I like to take a break every half an hour. I like to take a break every half an hour for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Now, isn't that interesting? It's almost like I'm dividing my hour and a half. You think that, oh no, I should be working eight hours a day and then at the end, you know, kind of reconsider or like go through everything that's happened throughout the day. And I just don't think that that works. It doesn't work for concept art because you're, you're already, like your mind is gonna be so drained by the time you've even drawn the third iteration, much less the 30th iteration, that you need at all times to have that confidence that you are indeed 
getting closer each time. You're getting closer each time to that solution. And that can only come about with you taking a step back and objectively asking yourself, is this the character that I envisioned? Is this the original vision coming to life? Okay, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and wrap this up and let's get into a live drawing. Let's get into a live drawing of this. And I wanna show you how once you have solved a lot of your issues, specifically regarding balance with your elements, balance with your elements, that has to do with, okay, we have now we have silk and we have tech. And both of those things are synonymous with exactly what we were talking about in the beginning. Exactly what we were talking about in the beginning. We have our boxer, which we have the hood, and those hoods are always made out of silk and shiny materials. Not to mention it looks awesome on our bunny girl. Uh, and then we have mech, which is another major, major thing. These two things, these two keywords, were the main things that I wanted you to think about when you first looked at this character. And uh, you can see over here, I was still trying to make the fur work a little bit, but it still just ended up looking like a Santa hood. It ended up making her look like, I don't know, like some sort of elf. There just was not another place where I could put this without it looking strange. I didn't, I didn't like the fur on the boots. It just wasn't a, personally a place that I wanted to go. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying it's impossible to make that work, but it just felt out of place. It wasn't the character that I wanted. Now there was one more thing that I wanted to touch on, and this might actually launch us into our live drawing. And that is our villain. Now, last week we talked about, okay, we have this character which is clearly our hero. We have our hero character. And there's a lot of things that about this design which are leading us to uh, like this character, to relate to them, to feel like uh, they are indeed a hero, right? But then let's say we wanted to push this more towards a villain. What would we do for that? Well, one of the major things that I found to make your characters look more mysterious or less relatable, and this also has to do with, uh, this can play into the boxer trope, is having that hood cover the face. Having the hood cover the face and then there's this ominous shadow that's casted across the, the top of the eyes. Now we are all left with just uh, the bottom of the face and it just we are a little bit disconnected with the character. It causes a darker vibe to the character. Uh, other things could be um, sharper angles. There's a lot more sharper angles that are going into this. Now, I'm not saying that every villain has to have sharp angles and spikes coming off of their boots, you know, but uh, making the character look a little bit more dangerous, less, less uh, amicable, right? I'm not saying just put spikes on everything, but think about shape language, things like that, that will allow your character to take on a bit more of a dark vibe. Um, so that's pretty cool too. And actually, this is what I want to expand upon with our live drawing because we're going to be talking about a diamond shape. Remember that old sketch that I was talking about a couple minutes ago? We have another silhouette in there that we can now uh, build upon with all the problems that we've solved and create a new character. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and merge this. I'm going to grab this sketch right here. And I'm going to copy that, copy that. And let's also, let me just go ahead and paste that. Okay, we've got that there. And I also wanna grab our bunny girl from the bottom left, the one that I'm really enjoying. So let's get that and let's take those problems that we've solved and let's make a new one. Let's make a new one right for, right in front of you, right for your viewing pleasure. I'm gonna draw this because I'm always a fan of doing things live. Always gotta have that stuff in there. Um, I, I hope that you will uh, pardon the, oh wait, where is the, where's that sketch? Where'd that sketch go? Oh, there it is. I hope that you'll pardon the great use of time-lapse. I really wanted to do that to illustrate just a principle. Um, and I'm hoping that that came through correctly. I don't know, you guys can let me know in the comments if you would rather watch me draw for hours all those different iterations. It is pretty tough uh, to do that, especially like drawing iterations, using your creative mind while simultaneously engaging the part of my mind that I use to teach and talk on these. It's actually quite challenging, but it is a challenge that I accept. It is a challenge that I accept and I get why not a lot of people do it. And that is because 
It's challenging. So speaking of challenging, let's go ahead and stop flapping our gums and get to this drawing. Okay, so based upon what we've learned before, we want to create a villainous character. So here's what I actually want to do with that. I'm going to tackle this with our lines have already sort of been done, but I'm going to start sketching in some additional lines. I'll start pulling out the lines that I really like. And I am going to use a lot of the designs that we have created over here on this character, specifically on the hood. Specifically on this hood, I'm going to be using a lot of this right here. Let me go ahead and highlight what I'm looking at. So I love this design of the hood, how it comes down like this, and it creates this triangular sort of a fold in the fabric. And then it goes like that, right? And then the sleeve comes down. I love that design, and I'm going to be taking that problem that we've solved and using it for our own dastardly villain. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the triangles that are going to exist here. And then this hood is going to go back like this. And I love this silhouette, just absolutely love this silhouette. And then this hood, I want to cover the face because that was what we discussed earlier about making a character feel more ominous. Making a character feel more ominous. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with this. Uh, let's see here. I actually want to carry this tech over. I love this tech design on the chest plate, and I want to continue that. So let's continue that down here. In fact, let's have this hood piece be very, very small. So that way we can allow more of these techie pieces to kind of go across the hips. Maybe there's more tech included in this character, right? And again, right now I'm just basically free associating. I'm just free associating. Uh, just coming up with ideas on the fly. Not worrying necessarily if they're going to work out perfectly. But I am sketching things in, making progress. Okay, now for these legs, I do want them still to be large, but I want to keep that... I want to keep that diamond shape. So I'm gonna have the legs be a little bit larger. But overall, I'm going to keep them uh, going thinner. Cool. Now, the coolest part is these massive, these massive shoulder pads, or basically the edges of her, I imagine this would be the edge of the hood. And then from there, I want these large, huge, techie gauntlets to be coming out of here. And that is going to create boxer number two. Okay, so we have created a silhouette. We've created some lines. Now let's go ahead and begin uh, adding in some additional values. Let's go ahead and switch over to values. So I'm going to set this, uh, set this sketch behind a multiply, and I'm going to start adding in some values. Now a quick way that I like to do this is just go ahead and uh, paint in the entire silhouette of the character. Paint in the entire silhouette of the character. Let's see, I want a little space right there. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Now we are going to start adding in some, uh, we're going to be playing around with some light colors and dark colors. So let's say that right here we want this to be a lighter value. We want lighter values maybe right here in the face, maybe going down. It's not bad. We want a light value right here on the edge of the hood because we like that. And let's have some values just kind of going down. This is also representing lighting. It's also representing lighting of our character. Let's just start with something like that. Now, I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to call this overpaint, right? OP layer, the good old OP layer. Now, this is where we really start to get in there, and we're painting over everything, we're painting over everything. And what I want you guys to start thinking about in this stage is a couple things. I found that low contrast actually lends itself. Now, low contrast, what does that mean? That is a fancy way of saying, uh, don't have a huge contrast between your white, like don't paint, 
paint like straight white onto the character just yet. Don't do that just yet. Focus on just your dark grays and middle grays. Focus on dark grays and middle grays to sort of uh, start designing. So case in point, let's go ahead and get in there. We're, we wanna solve a small problem and that is, what is the tech on this armor? Or what is the tech on this arm gonna look like? Well, let's get in there and let's go ahead and lay down some darker values. Let's kind of carve something out really quick. Let's carve something out. I'm gonna use a medium value right here. And I'm going to begin carving out a few things that might make our tech arm work. Now you wanna be considering, of course, how this thing is actually going to bend. So you wanna show things like, okay, well here is the actual, here's the hinging point. The hinging point is going to be here, right? So you wanna think about, okay, well what little things, what little techie pieces can we show in here to show that there's a separation between this part and this part, right? So we can have that hinging design going on. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking about. Let's go ahead and put it into practice. Let's go ahead and put it into practice. So I'm gonna go ahead and have uh, something like this. Maybe we'll have like little designs in here. And for this, I'm gonna bring this out a little bit more. And another thing that I was thinking about was I wanna still retain those bunny ears, those bunny ears. So I'm gonna actually stick those out a little bit. Those bunny ears are gonna come out like this adding to the silhouette, adding to it. It's going to have a little trim on there. That's kind of cool. Not bad, not bad. Now these gloves that come down, I want these things to be huge. I want these things to be mega big. But how do we design them? Well, let's go ahead and figure that out. So. Let's darken down our values. Let's start pulling a few things out. Pulling out some, pulling out some plates, I guess you could call it. I want a lot, I want a huge plate to cover this entire. Another thing that you can do is that you can stay away from figuring out a lot of your tech pieces by overlaying. Ideally, you should know what's happening underneath your tech pieces, but you can cover a lot of that detail up by adding in armor, armor plating basically armor plating like this. It'll cover up a lot of your sort of intricacies that maybe you wanna hide. And sometimes that's okay. That's okay during the concept stage because you can always go back in there later and figure out, okay, how is this actually going to work? How is this actually going to you know, move with our character? Uh, another thing that helps to create depth is allowing the planes of your, of your pieces to take on different values. So here's a good example. Let's say that all the planes that are facing upwards, all the planes of this armor that are facing upwards, let's have those be a lighter value. And see how immediately, okay, this plane is facing upwards, that plane is facing upwards, this plane is facing upwards. Once you start doing this type of thing, and all of the planes that start to turn downwards go to this mid-gray, mid-gray, mid-gray. And once you start to do this, you can then back out and see, oh wow, cool, I can see a very clear uh, layering of metallic pieces happening within there. And that's done with values. Now imagine that you wanted to do that same thing with lines. It's not gonna work out as well. It's not gonna work out as well because then you have to like, draw this thing and then you're like, okay, the plate looks like this and then, you know, like that. And then there's, oh, there's another one in here. And do you see how it takes a lot longer to do this type of thing, at least for me? I don't like working like this because it, it's not conducive to a creative environment. Once you have this, once you have something like this, then you can take it over to lines because you've worked out a few problems. But in the beginning, when you're just drawing, when you're just kind of messing around with ideas, uh, do yourself a favor and just work in values. Just work in values. So these techie arms are looking really cool. 
And of course, we all love techie, big, punchy gauntlets. You know, a character that comes to mind is Vi. Yet we know that there's more than one way to create a big, gauntleted fighter person, fighter character. And I've shown you how to do that right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and move down to our... Uh, I like that these things look like punching gloves too. I think that would be a big part of the design that I would want to preserve. So I would want her punching or the gloves to have that curling feature of an actual punching glove. Gotta love it, gotta love it. Okay, let's say that there's more tech that goes down her legs. We have more tech within here. I don't wanna take too much of your guys' time because I know that you guys wanna learn quick. You guys wanna learn quick and I don't know. I, I actually, I'm, I'm always conflicted when I think about I want to teach somebody. I truly want you guys to get good value out of this, and I want to be efficient with my teaching. Because I know that when I want to when I look up something on YouTube, I want to know the answer within like 30 seconds of how to do something. And and it just pains me because I would love to be able to teach people how to like basically huge huge benchmarks that I was able to or not benchmarks. Like huge keys that I discovered along the way and processes that really helped me when I was designing my characters. But unfortunately, those just can't be fit into 30 seconds. Now, there are people that have uh, figured out ways to, like once you start editing videos, there are ways that you can present a lot of information in a quick amount of time. Um, but unfortunately, I just didn't want that style for the show. Not to mention I hate editing. I hate editing, which is why I usually like to do a lot of my shows in one take. Um, and I'm hoping that that allows the people that are receptive to this to feel like they are there, right? I want you guys to truly feel like you're here with me and you're watching everything happen because that's one thing that you don't get with an edited video. You know that all the mistakes were edited out. You know that all the stutters were taken out. You know, all the weird stuff and, and mistakes and <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying. And as they should be, as they should be. I'm not knocking anybody who does that type of design or has that type of show. Um, but, oh, I actually like that one. <laughs> I like that face. Or I like that mouth style. That's cool. Isn't that funny how just that type of, um, just that shape right there can inform so much of the character? But anyway, uh, point being, I really liked, I'm going to start adding in those really bright lights now. And see how I'm just throwing in values to create a design, but I'm not too worried about what it is yet. Not too worried about what it is yet. Uh, I totally forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> Point is, I hope that you guys enjoy this as much as I do. I truly love figuring out the best way to present something live while also showing the exact process that I go through to create a character. As well as understanding that, hey, you know what? A lot of my concepts just aren't that good. A lot of my concepts are just, they're okay, but they get you closer. Concepts are designed to get you closer to something. And that's what I feel like a great deal of people just don't understand. They don't understand that concepts are meant to get you somewhere. They're not meant to solve the problem right away. They're almost never meant to solve the problem right away. Sometimes you do get lucky. Don't get me wrong. Oftentimes I do look back at an original, like the very first sketch that I did. And after I did all the, all of the studies to get me to this point, right? Like on the left, I'll look back at that original sketch and I'll be like, oh man, there was something there. There was something there. And then I might go back and refine this and who knows, this might be the character. But uh, regardless, you can see now that we have created a new character that fits our archetype, trope, and spin. But it's a completely different treatment. That's what we wanted to call this. That was the word I was looking for, treatment. It's a treatment, ladies and gentlemen. Liking that. Liking that. Heck yeah, that's pretty cool. So now we have two different treatments of our character, as you can see here, and both fit our archetype. 
and this one was able to come out. You might look at this and be like, oh, wow, that's, that's so cool. Or at least I'm hoping you're think, thinking it's cool. But you can see how that one was much easier to do because we had already solved a lot of problems with this one on the left. We didn't have to think about, oh, how am I going to work in fur to this? Nope, we already, we already can fur. Fur's out. Fur's out. Silk is in. Silk and tech are in. And then we were able to take, hey, some of these uh, light designs. And we are like, okay, well, let's work those in. Where do those go? Maybe here and uh, here. And then that already uh, fits the style of the previous one. We've just transposed it onto another character. And that allowed our creative process to go much quicker. And already, I look at this character and I'm like, ooh, this is actually really cool. I actually like this character a lot already. We have a head start. And that's because, okay, this is the point, is that concept art is designed to find solutions. And once you start finding those solutions, then each character that follows that, each character that follows that solution will be easier and easier and easier. And then eventually, like now I could create 10 different variations of this character, of our bunny girl that we really enjoy on the left. And now you send that over to the client and now you get even closer to that final character, that one is, that is going to make it into the game, the one that's gonna make you look like an amazing artist who knows what they're doing. And you're gonna have a ton of fun by doing that. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. To <laughs> totally hit the light on the side there. <laughs> Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on YouTube. I hope you guys got some good uh, value out of this. Uh, the next week, I think what we're gonna be doing is we'll decide on a final version of this character. It's probably going to be this one on the left. I'm really liking this character. And we're gonna start moving into color. We're gonna start moving into figuring out color schemes and really getting into the nitty gritty of designing uh, the final look of our character. We're gonna be having a lot of fun with that. So uh, as always, I hope you guys had some fun today. And if you would like to download this PSD as well as all the other PSDs from before, from the episodes past and just click up here. It'll take you over to Patreon where you can download, yes, this one. And like I said, all the other ones from the past. You guys can have a lot of fun with that. I highly recommend you guys get on there and uh, zoom in. Just take a look at all of these iterations and take a look at the style and how loose the early ones are and just how I go about kind of refining those to get to a final piece. That is what I would recommend that you guys do if you choose to go on and support the show. Again, I'm so thankful for all of you that have decided to do that. Again, it's never never uh, required. I just truly appreciate that you guys love the show enough, uh, enough to give back. So with that, we are going to go ahead and take off, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you guys next week. Until then, I want to see some amazing characters. And until next time, you guys stay amazing. See you soon. I will leave you with some good old lovely lane. See you guys.